name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. I don't know, but I came to just name drop Jesus. Jesus, you keep making way out of nowhere. Jesus, you're my healer. Jesus, you're my deliverer.
that was fun. It wouldn't be my family to have to get back to the chair yet. <laughs> special prayer request. Uh, uh, please keep them. Um, several of you know my prayer partner, uh, Pastor James Brooks uh, from Harmony Community Church. He was with us uh, maybe about three weeks ago and he preached and he told us about the challenges with his dad's health condition. Uh, on yesterday, his dad went home to be with the Lord. Uh, his dad was the founding pastor of Harmony who he took after, uh, took over after his dad's sickness. Please uh, let us keep uh, that church in prayer. Amen. Amen. I believe that uh, Apostolic Church in Chicago has a huge court case that they are dealing with. We want to keep that church in prayer also. Amen. Amen. This morning, uh, we are continuing uh, our sermonic series. Actually, we're closing our sermonic series on It Happens After Prayer. And it is our goal to create a devotional book so we don't forget about the principles that we have learned uh, during this sermonic series. Amen. Amen. We begin the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday. Uh, we started with what prayer can do, uh, looking at the life of Jabez. Next Sunday, we dealt with David, the road to recovery. We covered the aspect of repentance. On Mother's Day, uh, we learned from Hannah uh, the power of a praying mother. Amen. I believe in the building today we have some praying mothers that have prayed their children through. Amen. Following that, we looked at King Solomon, who was one of the wisest people in Scripture. And we learned about his prayer requests a sermon entitled The Right Request. Instead of money, Solomon asks for wisdom from God. Memorial Day weekend, we heard from the elder Robert Glover dealing with a committed prayer life as we studied Hezekiah. Following that, we looked at Elisha in a message entitled Prayer That Can Change Your Perspective. The past three weeks, uh, we literally played uh, red light. Uh, we looked at Paul and his thorn in his flesh, and we dealt with what to do when God says no. The following week, we looked at David again in a message entitled, Praying Your Way Out of a Pit. David said he waited patiently. God in the midst of adversity. That's a hard thing to do, ain't it? Then I got a lot of great amens last week because it was uh, what to do when God answers your prayer. Amen. That's one of those green lights uh, that we love to hear. We found out that when God answers our prayer, there's some things that we need to do to bring God glory, to not take His grace for granted. Don't miss his most important gift, which is salvation. So today, uh, we are closing out uh, this sermonic series with, uh, I believe that the book of Joshua has literally been a personal roadmap for me in my journey here at New Community. Uh, I believe that God has great things in store for us, uh, and I believe the book of Joshua has literally some ways giving me a blueprint of how to effectively serve this congregation. So this morning I ask that you please stand for the reading of God's Word. Uh, I'm definitely going to be preaching by faith today because uh, somehow after all the selfie and great worship, I can't find my eyeglasses. <laughs> so just, just keep saying amen. We're going to get through it in the next 25 minutes. Joshua. Chapter number 10. And I'll begin reading at verse number 6. Joshua uh, chapter number 10. And I'll begin reading at verse number 6. In 
In devotion time this week, I ask that you read the entire chapter. I believe that it is uh, about 50 verses in this particular, I'm sorry, 28. So please read the entire chapter. When you have to say man, it begins the reading of God's word. The Gibeonites sent word to Joshua in the camp of Gilgal. Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us, help us. Because all of the Amorite kings, the hill country, have joined forces against us. Joshua marched up from Gilgal with the, his entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel, who defeated them in a great victory in Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road going up to ben Haran and cut them down all the way from Ascah and Machedon. As they fled before Israel, the road down to Ben Haran and to Asco, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them from the sky. More of them died from the hailstorms and were killed by the swords of the Israelites. On that day, the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel. Joshua said in to the Lord in the presence of Israel. O oh, son, stand still over Gibeon. O oh, moon, over the valley of Ejelon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped. The nation avenged itself on its enemies. As it is written in the book of Jeskar. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky, delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since. A day when the Lord listened to man. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp of Gilgal. Verse number 12, 13 for emphasis. On that day, on the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, O sun, stand still over Gibeon. O moon, over the valley of Ajalon. The sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. Why? Why? Grab your neighbor by the hand. Some stuff just kind of all preaches by itself. Spirit of the living God, we need you today, Lord. We realize you alone the source of our strength. It's freezing time, Father. And again, it is my prayer that my personal sin doesn't get in the way of you saving. That people don't hear from Chris today, but they hear directly from Christ. Lord, we are in a fight. The battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. Lord, it is my prayer that we use the weapons 
which are not carnal. Lord, help us to talk to you for strategy. Lord, help us to communicate with you for strength. Lord, help us to realize that this battle is not one standing, but kneeling. So Lord, have your way today. We already feel your presence in the atmosphere. So Lord, we ask you to do what you do and that's be God. Heal, deliver. It's in Jesus' name I pray that all of God's children say amen as you take your seats. morning, we will deal with the subject of asking God for the impossible. It's my prayer that by the end of this message, uh, that you would have your own son stand still prayer. Uh, that you will begin to seek God to do some things that only he has the power to do. Amen. One of the most interesting accounts I read about the power of corporate prayer dealt with an event that took place in Mount Vernon, Texas. Mount Vernon, Texas, about there, there was a club by the name, club or rather bar by the name of Drummond's. The owner of Drummond began construction on expanding his bar in business, hoping that he would have a greater influence on this particular community. So, in response to this bar, which was in close proximity to this Southern Baptist Church, instead of picketing, the church decided that they were going to begin to have all night prayer meetings. Not picketing, but prayer. So the church began praying. The bar continued its expansion project. But a week before the grand opening of the bar, a lightning bolt struck the bar and burned it to the ground. The angry bar owner, here it is church, eventually sued the church on the grounds that the church was ultimately responsible for the demise of his business through direct or indirect action. Get this, so the judge, as he carefully read through the plaintiff's complaint, said this, because they were saying that the church was responsible for this bar being destroyed. You know what the church did? They denied. So he ended up in court. Here's what the judge says. He said, I don't know how I'm going to decide this but it appears from the paperwork that what we have here now is a bar owner who now believes in the power of prayer <laughs> and an entire congregation that doesn't. <laughs> Asking God for the impossible. And is there anybody that showed up in New Community? Joshua, 
You look his name up in Hebrew, it literally means Jehovah saves. Okay, you, you, you don't speak Hebrew, but maybe you know uh, the different terminology which we sang about earlier. In, in, in Greek, his name means Jesus is salvation. I, I thought I'd give more amens than that. I think I'll say it again. His name means Jesus saves. Two thirds got it. I might go to this side. His name means Jesus saves. And is there anybody that showed up to give thanks to God just for saving you? Might not have the money you want, but you save me. Might not have the boo I like, but you save me, Lord. Josh. He's a great follower. Yeah. If you read through chapter number one, you understand that his predecessor is Moses. And if you read chapter one, you'll find out it says that he was Moses' aide. Newsflash for many of us in here who want a position in leadership, you need to understand this. Leadership requires, first of all, fellowship. Is my mic still on? Leadership first requires great fellowship. I, I like the way Maxwell put it. He puts it like this. He says, uh, if you want to lead on the highest level, you have to be willing to serve on the lowest level. to serve on the lowest level. So Joshua, he's promoted because he's a great follower. The, the book of Joshua could have been the book of Aaron. But you know what Aaron did when, when he had his chance and leadership. Moses came down from the mountain and they were running around butt naked cutting themselves. That would disqualify you from leadership. Joshua, he's, he's this great follower. But secondly, J Joshua, R R R J is a man of faith. Let church say faith. faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Joshua had so much faith that he walked around the walls of Jericho with a praise team, not a military team. God will have you do some strange stuff by He's a man of faith. He, he's a man that's a great follower. But, but, but Joshua also, here it is, church, we might not like this, had some failures. Let's just say failures. Yes. You, you do remember at Ai, don't you? Yes. Uh, that there was someone in the camp that was stealing, and because one person blew it, the whole army lost. Newsflash, you are your brothers and sisters keep. So, so many times we want to exempt ourselves from what other folks do. No, if your brother is slipping, you who are saved have a responsibility to see about that so also. So Joshua, he, he had this failure at Ai, but in chapter number nine we find out he has another failure. You look at chapter number nine, keep your Bible open, I'm planning to preach from it. Chapter 9, verse number 14, it says, The men of Israel sampled their provisions. Here it is. This is dangerous. But did not inquire of the Lord. Then Joshua made a treaty of peace with them to let them live. And the leaders of the assembly ratified it by oath. What's going on there? Okay, they there's a group of people called the Gibeonites. And the Gibeonites uh, made it seem like or they really <coughs> tricked the nation of Israel. But the danger of this trick is this. Uh, it's not that they tricked them, but they did not inquire about God about this partnership. I might as well come talk to y'all now. Because most of us get in a lot of trouble making partnership with people that God has not authorized. 
happen. But if God did not authorize that relationship, you better learn how to run in step. Who is quiet in that? Because mama taught me, baby, everything that looked good. Help me preach here today. There's some stuff that will be attracted that can cause you to lose what God has ordained. And the danger of this is this. It looks so good to them that they thought they didn't need to ask God for permission. Every promotion you get is not always from God. Oh, they can cut that out of the tape. They can move on. So Joshua, before we get to chapter 10, they, they, got, they have some issues because uh, they are now responsible for the Gibeonites because they made, and here it is, they made an oath, they made a promise. And so, uh, I shouldn't say this, bro. He ever said it. I have the privilege to do a lot of marriage counseling sometimes. Sometimes people, they'll say that. They say, uh, well, you know, I... I should be able to get out of this because I, I should be able to get out of this because I, uh, you know, I, I didn't really pray to God when I, when I, you know, you know, ate all that wedding cake. I, 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 I didn't talk to God. Well, well, you stood before the preacher, but most importantly, you stood before God with that covenant. I, I know you might not like it, but you did it. I didn't. So, so, so you, you got to be careful. That God has not authorized. That didn't help somebody already. And then you, you can leave out of church with your offering today. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the danger. Because now, now, the children of Israel are responsible for the care of the Gibeonites. And guess what? The Gibeonites have enemies. Read at the beginning of chapter 10. You'll find out that there are, here it is, church. Five kings that now want to make war with the Israelites based upon their connection to the Gibeonites. This is bad. Isn't it funny how all your enemies know how to get together just to take you out? And is there anybody real enough to raise your hand and at least wink at me that can testify there have been days in your life where you had to trust God in a tight spot? If the money was together, the kids acted up now. The kids ain't acting up, it's bills that are overwhelming and now you mean to tell me I got a health condition too? of Israel are at. They have enemies on all sides. Yes. Have you ever been there in your life? Yes. When you begin to look at your situation, you say, Lord, I don't think there's no way out of this mess. You know what you say, stop. It's happening. Yeah. That's there's another attitude, y'all. So the challenging question to ask the new community is how, how, preacher, what, how? Why should I ask God for the impossible? What can God do that I can't do for myself? Why, why should I have faith? The first point is this. You, you, you 
should ask God for the impossible. Here it is, church. Because he has a word about your week. That's so good. If I may take myself today. You should ask God to do the impossible because he has given a word about your week. Here it is. Her, her. I'm still in the text. But yeah, I say I got it. it. Says the Lord said to Joshua, "Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hands. Not one of them will be able to withstand you." Church folks don't know when to get excited. I'll read it again. You should ask 
confident possible because it's giving you a word about your win. But, but secondly, you, you should ask God for the impossible here in this church <laughs> because, here it is, he has the capability to cover you from casualties. Say it again. You should ask God for the impossible because he, he, he has the capability to cover you from casualties. Where's that in the text? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to preach from it. Keep reading. Look at verse number 9. It says, After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. And you might be asking, why is that so significant? Because here it is. They, in order to get to Gilgal, Kelvin, that's a 25-mile hike. Gets even deeper than that. Uphill. I told you they about to have a fight. Now you mean to tell me that I'm going to have to hike 25 miles uphill before I fight? And is there anybody just can thank God just for giving you strength before you even go into a fight? Oh my God. He gives them strength to even get to the fight. But get deep in that because the Bible says that not only did he give us strength to get to the fight, the Bible lets us know that the Lord sends the opposing armies into confusion. Wow. That, that, that's the second punch. The third punch God gives them is this. The Bible says that a hailstorm begins to appear. But get this. The hailstorm only hits the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Good God Almighty. Yeah. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. How in the world that if it's a hailstorm, it knows who to hit? Yeah. And I believe there's some people that can testify God protected you from some stuff and then he been able to keep you when other people drown and some stuff you ain't
your destination because he and he alone is God. I can't tell you when or how, but what I can tell you is who. He is able to do exceedingly abundant, above more than you ask or think, according to his power that's available to you. What's my son's still prayer? I'm glad you asked. I'm praying that God changes this community through this church. You know what makes it even more crazier? I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe that I was created to do it. I ain't going nowhere. Write as many emails as you want. I'm on a sign. Be obedient. You ain't got to clap. I don't need no claps because I'm on the side. Because you have a destiny to reach. But it's based upon being obedient. So the worship team comes forward. There's some people in the building today that are saying, you know what? I've been asking God. But I'm in the waiting game. I won't get out to heal my loved one, but it, I feel as though it's not happening fast enough. Or maybe you're saying, you know what? I, I, I got some folks I'm connected to, and I, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. The interesting part of this text is this. He didn't get rid of the Gibeonites, even though he was in this mess because of them. He kept fighting for them. Will you fight for those that can't fight for themselves? Will you pray for those that don't know how to pray for themselves? So I help just take their place around the sanctuary. There's some people in the building this morning that, let's be honest, you're facing some impossible situations. <laughs> and if you be real, you've tried everything already. But God. He can do it. If he stopped the sun, if he allowed hailstones to come down if they didn't get touched by them, if he allowed them to hike over 25 miles and then get into a fight with some folks, don't you think God thinks enough about you? First of all, for those that that are in a situation right now that you're feeling as though you, you, you need God right now. I, I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know the sickness. I don't know the amount of pressure. I do not know, but I do know prayer works if you're working. So, and by the sound of my voice, if you're in one of those situations right now, come forward. We have our prayer team that are here. We have elders around the building. We are here to pray with you because prayer works give God praise as they prepare to come. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Don't wait. Don't wait. God is evil. The second pillar is for those that have not given their life to Christ. And you're saying, you know what, preacher? I, I need to give my life to Christ today. You're here. And you have not given your life to Christ. Today is that day. It's as simple as your ABC. Accept believe and confess because guess what? There's no amount of sin that can keep them from loving you. Amen. Hallelujah. The third appeal is for those that are without a church home and you're saying, you know what? I've been tossing it back and forth but I know this is where God wants me to be. Know that He's already meeting you here. You are part of our
our puzzle. And we can't be everything we're supposed to be without you. It's nothing to be embarrassed about because people don't have a heaven and hell to put you in. God wants a relationship with you. And if you are in that, either three of those categories, we're asking that you come at this time. Amen. Heavenly gracious Father, as your people are coming, we believe that you're able, Lord. If you did it for Joshua, you can do it for us. Lord, we face some impossible situations. But we believe that you're able to pull us through us. Lord, we believe in the power of prayer. So, Lord, we're going to talk to you about our situation. Because Jesus, keep making a way out of no way for us. Lord, we're going to trust you where we can't trace you. Lord, we're believing that you have the power to pull us through. So, Jesus.